Hi everyone. So on our ICT lesson today, we shall be taking a look at the diagrammatic representation of a computer. So at the end of today's lesson, the students should be able to understand the computer structure, that's the data flow process of the computer, the input units, what the, what the input unit does, the central processing units and the types, how the CPU operates, and the storage units and the types of storage units and also the output units operation so the computer structure i want us to pay close attention to the direction of data flow between the different parts of the system so data is entered into the system through the input medium directly onto the cpu or to the storage where the CPU, that's the central processing unit, fetches for processing and it is represented as information through the output medium, our monitors, our printers, speakers and other inputs. So let us take a look at the input units. Input devices are used to transfer data into the computer. The input unit is meant to receive the data from the user. The data is prepared on an input medium, that's the mouse, keyboard, scanners, and other types of the inputs devices in the coded form, understandable to the computer and sent to the CPU for further processing. So let us take a look at this image. We have um, the input medium here and any other type of input device you might think of. They collect data from the user and they are sent to the CPU for processing. Let us move on. So to the central processing units, we have the two types two types of central processing units, the control units and the arithmetic arithmetic logic unit. The CPU is the brain of the computer system. All major calculations and comparisons are made inside the CPU and it is also responsible for activation and controlling the operation of other units. So the two types of these the major components of the um, CPU is the arithmetic logic units and the control units. Let us take a look at the arithmetic logic units. This performs all arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. It also uses logic operation for comparison. Yeah, um, The control units of the CPU controls the entire operation of the computer. It also controls all other devices such as memory, the input and output devices that are connected to the computer. The control unit fetches instructions from memory, decodes the instruction, interprets the instruction to know what the tasks are to be performed and sends suitable control signals to other components of the system to perform where necessary. So we have um, a diagram here showing how the central processing unit of the computer operates. So data is entered using our input medium into the CPU. So the CPU decides which operation or task it is. If it is mathematic, mathematical um, operation, which is arithmetic, it's handled by the arithmetic logic units. If it is meant to be performed by other components of the system, the control unit assigns it to which other component it is. So after processing, the information is sent to the output units to display to the user or stored into the uh, memory of the computer. So let us take a look at the storage units of the computer and its types. The storage unit is also known as system memory. It stores the data, information and programs during processing a computer. It stores data either temporarily or permanently. And they are of two types. We have the primary or volatile memory and the secondary or non-volatile memory. The primary memory is the internal memory of the computer also known as the main memory. 
it holds the data and instruction on which the computer is currently working on and the primary memory are also of two types the random access memory and the read only memory the random access memory is also known as the read and write memory of the computer and it is a temporary memory it is a temporary memory in the sense that all tasks or operations of the cpu carried out on the ram are lost when the power supply of the system of the computer system is switched off so the read only memory of the computer is a permanent type of memory in the computer system and its contents are not lost when power supply is switched off so we we'll move to the secondary type of memory or the non-volatile memory this is an external memory of the computer and it's also known as auxiliary memory or permanent memory it is used to store different programs and information permanently they include the floppy disk the magnetic or hard drive as they are popularly known the optical disk the magnetic tapes among the rest so um, there's a diagrammatic representation of the storage unit of the computer the storage unit of the computer the types we have the primary and the secondary types the ROM under the primary memory type and also the random access memory so the types of secondary memory that we have that which are the external storages are the hard drives the floppy disk the cd-rom and also the our common flash drive so let us take a look at the output units of the computer output devices are used to transform to transfer information out from the computer system to the outside world the purpose of an output device is to transfer information from its internal character code as stored inside the computer to an appropriate or understandable reward representation examples of the output devices we have are the printers the monitors speakers projectors plotters among the rest so after the cpu does its job by processing the data we sent through the input medium we expect results which is the information so this information the cpu sends this information to us to the user through the output medium the output medium we have the common ones are the printers we get our works that has been carried out inside the computer on printed pages that's hard copy or through display on the monitor it also displays it can also be, we can also have our display through a projector it's a secondary type of type of display and also we can get our information through audio that's through the speaker in audio form formats so um, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson so before we go I would like um, the students to take this as a takeaway quiz so number one why is the primary memory of the computer also called volatile memory number two give three differences between primary and secondary memories and lastly what is the full meaning of SRAM and the DRAM the SRAM and DRAM are types of the random access memory. Thank you for listening.